It's Friday, August 23rd, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. On today's show, we learn more about summer insects with our favorite Barnstable County entomologists, and we listen to stories from some of our oldest residents. Now, for a look at municipal and legislative notes. In the fall of 2018, the Center for the Study of Sport and Society and several other collaborators agreed to study the climate within athletics at Barnstable High School. The purpose of the project is to provide Barnstable Public School District with the evidence to support increased understanding and targeted improvements to the Barnstable High School Athletics Program to align with the whole child vision of the district. You can find the report at the school district website, www.barnstable.k12.ma.us. Tis the season for earwigs and mosquitoes. Our favorite entomologist duo is back with another creepy crawly episode of Bug Buzz. Hi, I'm Larry Dapsis. I'm the entomologist with Cape Cod Cooperative Extension, and I'm here with my high flying bug buddy, Gabrielle Sikulski. I'm the entomologist with Cape Cod Mosquito Control. So, welcome to Bug Buzz. And in this show, Gabby and I each bring an insect to, you know, into your room basically. You may have seen them, know something about them, but we're going to fill you in on a lot of other interesting details to kind of round out how these things make their living. So, today, Gabby, what do you bring into the party? I'm going to talk about mosquitoes. Not a surprise this Not time of year. Not a shock and, and no. something and locally so important as well as globally. It is. And something that you don't want in your room, right? Um, so here in Cape Cod, we've got about 25 different species of mosquitoes. I know everybody sees them, swats them, doesn't really look at them. They just want to get rid of them. And that's a good thing, too, because mosquitoes are not only annoying, but they also carry diseases. Sure. And one of the things I feel like I need to mention at this time is that West Nile virus is definitely in all of the towns on Cape Cod. And as we go into summer, one of the things to consider is that mosquito bite, mosquitoes biting you might not just be annoying, but might be carrying disease mm -hmm. as well. Uh, last year on Cape Cod, we had a few people who got West Nile virus who had symptoms that were severe enough for them to seek medical assistance. So something to keep in mind, not just ruining your barbecue, but also maybe causing you illness as but well. But we also have a threat of triple E. We <coughs> do, um, more off Cape than mm -hmm. on Cape. This season is definitely ramping up to be a busy season for mosquito control. We had a lot of water, a lot of rain, even in the fall, the swamps were all wet and coming through the winter, it was a mild winter, everything stayed wet, everything stayed mild. The mosquitoes are moving along quickly and my crews are out right now sampling for mosquitoes and they're finding them everywhere they go. So you're finding larvae out there in the, in the pools? Larvae and pupa. So a couple sunny days and it looks like today might finally be sunny, <laughs> uh, they're going to be flying soon. So um, one of the things that I'd like to remind people this time of year is that you can do something to control mosquitoes on your own property. Mosquitoes lay their eggs in standing water or around standing water. The larvae hatch from those eggs and they live in the standing water. The pupa that develop from those larvae, also in standing water. You can see my theme here, standing water. Mm -hmm. What you don't want in your yard is standing water. In the, in the gutters, on the tarp that's over something in your yard, in any buckets outside, any standing water is mosquito habitat. So it's even a small amount of water even, can generate... Even a oh. small amount, like a little jar... Okay, so like you have here. ...can fill up with mosquitoes that's, rather quickly. That's a mosquito factory I'm looking at right that's there. That's a mosquito factory. And those were collected last week, so in May on Cape Cod. Okay, so if you're managing your standing water, there's really no need to um, spray for them. No, you should be able to control mosquitoes in your yard. And the mosquitoes that come out at dusk and at nighttime are freshwater mosquitoes. Those are mosquitoes that don't fly very far. They're coming from your yard or, as everybody who calls me tells me, their neighbor's, neighbor's. yard. <laughs> um, mosquitoes that bite you during the day are coming from salt marshes. They'll fly for up to five miles and they're aggressive biters, middle of the day biting you. Um, what you can do if you have mosquitoes like that is give mos Cape Cod Mosquito Control a call. We're yep. paid for in your taxes. We're a quasi-state organization. You pay for our services. If you have a mosquito problem, my crew should be sent out to take a look and find out where those mosquitoes are coming from. And if you were going to treat 
bodies of water. Uh, what are the types of chemicals that you guys are using? For the most part, we're using a bacteria, Bacillus thuringiensis israelensis, so you're BTI. Going biological. Biological all the way. This is Cape Cod. All right, very good. Thanks. So, all right, the transition from mosquitoes now to, to things that are kind of on the ground and in the soil. Mm. What, what I'm going to talk about today are earwigs, okay? And earwigs, as, as we've talked about, they, they look rather menacing. They you know, do. you see, you know, that long body, those pincers that look like they can really do some serious stuff. Um, these guys, they do have wings, but they rarely fly. And if they do take flight, they're actually kind of clumsy flyers, so they're better off being on the ground. Now, these guys have been with us since the Jurassic era. They've been on this planet for 200 million years, so they know their way around. Um, one of the things, I mean, these things get into lore in terms of poetry and writings, and there's this... Um, old wives tale about earwigs being able to get into your ear at night, lay eggs, and they'll eat your brains out and stuff. So there's a lot of stuff out there like that that, that it's easily dispelled. Um, I tell people here that are creeped out by earwigs, you know, they're what, three quarters, one inch long, okay? And, and people kind of grimace at those things when they see I that. Do. And, and in my job, I have found that I can tell people, look, it can always be worse. Let's say you lived in Taiwan, for example. Take a look at an earwig that's six inches long, okay? That might change your point of view. Now, how do these things make their living? Uh, they're omnivores. So they feed on living plant tissue, decaying plant tissue, um, animal matter, including they will prey upon insects. Um, so what I like to do is share um, my first experience mm. moving up here um, to Massachusetts 30 years ago, uh, Ruth and I got a house and a beautiful garden. And so I went to the garden center, got some flats of seedlings, and I put them under a tree, and they were there for probably a week. And when I was getting ready to do my gardening, going out to look at my flats, this is what I saw. Um, they were completely <laughs> chewed up. Um, yeah, take a look at this picture yeah, here. Thanks. They're amazing. So I didn't know quite what was going on till I lifted up the flat and saw our earwigs, a bunch of earwigs underneath it. Uh, so lesson learned. I was putting my, my flats now on picnic table or get them up off the ground. But you see quite a bit of damage on other plants. So like this basil plant, they'll feed on flowers. Um, they'll even feed on fruits like strawberries, but they, they might not eat the whole strawberry, but they're going to introduce decay organisms that's going to allow that thing to break down fairly quickly. If they are a reoccurring problem in your garden, uh, you can always resort to an a easy fix, uh, spinosad. So you go to a garden center and get Captain Jack's dead bug brew. Pretty effective stuff, very safe. You just don't spray it on the flowers themselves. <coughs> but those formidable looking pincers, yeah, they can actually use them. So if you put them in a situation where they're in a defensive mode, like we're showing here, it's got its abdomen curved up over the top of its body, pincers extended, and it's also spraying a very foul smelling liquid at the same time. And they can grab and pinch you. They're not going to cause a lot of damage, but as you see here, they can leave you a little bit of a welt and a, and a memory. Um, now, what I find amazing about earwigs is that most adult female insects, they lay their eggs and, and basically move on. So it's kind of like mm. your mosquitoes, they lay their eggs in a raft, and kids, you're on your own, have a nice life. What, what earwigs do, they have this maternal behavior, which is very rare in a non-social insect, unlike you know bumblebees and other right. things. So mom will lay her eggs, and she, as, as we see here, she stays with them to protect them from predators. And even when they hatch out into those little nymphs, and she stays with them still. And, and earwigs, they molt about five times from newly hatched to being an adult. And that mom will stay with those earwigs mm -hmm. until they've molted twice. They're almost like a third the way grown. It's like, you know, you're living with them until they're 12 years old. And then it's like, okay, move on, have a nice life. 
So that's it with this segment of Bug Buzz. Um, stay tuned for more interesting stuff in the future. What happens when curious high school students start asking their elders about lives past and present? An intergenerational storytelling event that is filled with insight, advice, and memories to last a lifetime. But, but there's no such person who knows the lot. Yeah. There's no such person. We all learn, we continually learn every day. No matter how old you are, you learn something new. Y you meet younger people like yourself, you meet, you, you learn from them too. It's a strange thing, it's not because of age. A age helps, but y you constantly learn. There's no such person who knows the lot. The music that I go for is jazz, smooth jazz, a little bit of rock and roll, but music is the happiest time in life. Even if it's classical, it's music. And it makes me so, so happy. I'm going to cry in a minute. I don't want to. <laughs> but that's my happiness. I traveled a great deal after I met uh, my last partner. And he was on the World War II bombers, mm -hmm. uh, the B-17 and the B-24, uh, that traveled around the country and are still traveling around the country. They come into Hyannis every year, about September. And so for uh, the years before he left the planes, I would go out for, because I worked and could have a three or four week vacation, which was perfect because I could go out uh, pick up the planes wherever they were, and then travel with them, and then leave from wherever, you know, a month later or three weeks later when I was coming back. Can I show you that? Uh, this is a picture telling you all the battles I was in. Oh, oh, oh really? Oh, oh wow. So you, got, so you got inducted to the military, uh, military on June 8th, 1943 yeah. in Boston. Yeah. Uh, and, and active service on June 22nd. And I, these are the battles. Did you see the battles like a, what, what was in? Normandy, uh, northern France. Northern France. Rhineland. Rhineland. Ardennes. Yeah. Central Europe. Central, yeah. Yeah. Good, good conduct medal, victory medal. Wow. What, what, uh, I graduated from Watertown High School in 1943. Yeah. And... Uh, I went to my place for saying, you know, the military guys, military. and uh, I went there with my mother, and I told my mother, if you want to come, I don't want you to cry. And she held my hand, and I got on the streetcar, went down to Harvard Square, and then the Mass Ave, and I went to the place where they, dis did, where they discharged me. Ooh. But that's where I started, and we went to uh, Camp Devons, Fort Devons, to be uh, put into the service. They gave us our uniforms, they gave us all the uh, needles that we needed. First time I was getting needles, I never thought I would get needles, but I scared in the hell of the needles. This was about 2 o'clock in the morning, and I was on my bunk and, and just laying there listening to the radio. This is... This is, this is before even TV was popular. And this guy on the radio says, uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, we have, are going to start a new program. We want all the young single men in Radio Land 
to call me and they will instantly be put right on radio and what I want them to do is to tell me the kind of young lady they are seeking. And I want all the young single women to call me and let me know what kind of guy that they're looking for and they, and they will, and everybody will hear them on radio. So, <clears throat> as I recall, the, 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 um, it went sort of like uh, the first guy that called, and everybody in Radio Land could hear him, was, uh, well, I'm looking for a young lady that's interested in walking the beach. And the second call was from, well, from a guy. He was interested in uh, women that enjoyed reading in the library. And the third one, and I got on the horn talking to Radio Land and told everybody that I was interested in, in somebody that was plump. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't two minutes more, it wasn't more than two minutes later and my future wife called me. And the rest of the story is history. Well, uh, the Boston schools were very, very good schools. I mean, we learned why. I didn't realize how well they were until I moved out to the world further out. Uh huh. Yeah, downtown Boston. Oh, one thing I have to make sure that I say it was very diverse. That's one of the wonderful things that I found out uh, when I moved on to California because I was able to, to interact with anybody, because we had all nationalities, downtown, South End, Boston, Massachusetts, for 31 years. And wh where did you go to college after that, or did you go to college at all? Yes, I uh, went to Ohio State. I had uh, been uh, salivating over Harvard catalogs and things of that yeah. sort, but this was the Depression period, and my parents were thrifty Scots people, and. Uh, they could have afforded maybe to send me someplace, but uh, uh, the senior scholarships tests were taken. All, all high school seniors took scholarship tests, yeah. and uh, I ranked high enough in the state that they gave me a free uh, scholarship oh, wow. to Ohio State. So as soon as, <laughs> as, soon as that, that happened, yeah. that nixed the Harvard deal. But yeah. uh, I did my best to teach them and to tell them you have to study, come over. You don't understand this? Sit down. I explained to you as much as Thank I you. could. But when he find out that the education is good, when he came back from the war in Iraq, he was a Marine. He came back and he said, Daddy, I want to go to university. Good thing. Yeah. I said, go. He, ne uh, he needs some money yeah, here. Yeah. Help me. But I, uh, I am glad that they recognize and I am glad to hear that, that they keep saying, Daddy, you were the best daddy in the world. I am glad to hear that. That's something that my kids recognize the effort that I did so that they can have a good education. I was born with the art and uh, uh, the gift of drawing anything I look at. So the only thing is that I do it my own way. Mm -hmm. and maybe if I had gone to art school, they would have shown me other ways of doing things. You know? mm -hmm. So no, I, I, but I made sure my two went to college. What made my life going into the future was getting drafted in the army mm -hmm. and and of course that basically you know stabilized me when i come out and like, like i said i went to went to electronic school and and, and get into the uh, electronic field and then from there you know 
working in the field. That's when I went to Northeastern and, and furthered my education and, you know, stayed in that field. I was under several of the ladies there who did the uh, testing of people who were sick or otherwise, um, and then went over to the state lab, did a six-week tour of duty over there, uh, testing for uh, all <coughs> the blood that had to be tested in order for people um, to get married. You had to have the test, and there are other tests going on too. And then back to Faulkner Hospital and finishing up with the more testing of blood, testing of uh, the uh, heart and that test we had all kinds of fingerprint finger pricks and a little bit of everything at that place and then I finished there and that was I got en I was engaged already so my husband said time to get married so I got married and he said you're not to work you would just stay home and have children so which I did the two children. There was no family life, and I wanted a family. So I left uh, baseball altogether, never looked back, and I entered Holy Cross College in Worcester. And I, I was the oldest of my class. Uh, I graduated when I was 27 years old. Uh, and then I went into the insurance business, and I went into the building business, and then I became a mortgage broker. Mm, wow. And I did very well on all of them. Mm. And here I am, 94 mm. years old, born right. June 26, 1924, in St. Elizabeth's Hospital. Well, I was the first girl to have um, a paper route in Worcester. Uh, my brother and his friend were going to St. John's, and so I took over both their routes. Mm -hmm. It was 250 people, and uh, it was all three deckers and in Worcester, and uh, I couldn't throw the, the papers up to the third floor, so I used to run up every yeah. day, ev every day, every day. My doodles, I have um, very symbolic, you know, as after doing a lot of study, going to the library and psychology and psychiatry, it's just been an interesting journey all these many years, um, looking it up and judge the diversity in my artwork. It uh, goes along with all my different classworks and you know, searching. It's been a beautiful journey, mm -hmm. not being 92, you know, it's got a year. <laughs> I went into uh, documents. I, I have a great history, in Amer or great liking for American history, yeah. particularly the presidents. And so I s decided one day, geez, wouldn't it be neat to have something written by one of these guys, you know? Yeah. There, you knew that he had his hand, uh, well, Thomas Jefferson had yeah. his hand right on that. So I started buying uh, presidential documents, and uh, when I ended up with all the presidents, and I had another set, and then well along on a third were some of the easy ones like Calvin Coolidge and yeah. so forth, and decided to go into the business. So then I was in the business for about 20 years here. It's t I'm just tapering off now. I sold them all over the world. I used to run ads in autograph magazines, three-page ads. And somebody, w if you can imagine this, would call from Stockholm, Sweden, yeah. and want to know if I have James Buchanan. Yeah. I'll figure that one out. Well, when you get to be 85, you have to, uh, you know, you relax a bit, you know? Yeah. You, you're not going to, well, you know, I guess uh, it's up to you, but a guy who drove me home from, from the church I signed at last, fr uh, last Saturday, he surprised me. I, I, I said, you must be... Uh, uh, I uh, I must be old, older than you by far. Says he, I'm ninety. <laughs> I I only took him to be eighty. Yeah. I, I I honestly thought he was younger than me. Says I, you beat me. I don't. You sound. You look great. Think any driving me. You know, say no no medical condition or nothing. Eh, say I'm fine. Oh, I say I'll be a son of a gun. I got one of the rocks in the other room, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what to put on it. So I wrote, enjoy every moment. And I think that's good advice. Even the bad ones, you're learning something every time, mm -hmm. every moment. 
and take that that's going to help you grow into who you are. I just enjoy being able to enjoy life as it's coming to me now. Yes, there's going to be sickness. There's going to be death. But hey, that's the way the world works. You got to say why you're in it. And when I tell you, love and happiness and joy is all you need in life. people to meet. Join the Rotary Club of Hyannis for the second annual Quahog Festival on the Town Green this Sunday, August 25th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Learn about how to protect Cape Cod's natural beauty and precious resources. Enjoy live music including rockin' tunes by Sarah Swain and the O'Boys, delicious festival food including unique Quahog offerings, and kids activities focused on sustainability. Proceeds benefit the local community, nonprofit organizations, and scholarship fund. Fun for the whole entire family. Comments, suggestions, accolades, connect with us on Facebook, email us, or send us an old-fashioned note by Carrier Pigeon. Channel 18 works for you. I'm Paula Hersey, and thank you for watching Barnstable today.